Hi, I'm Shara Conroy, and today I'm going to be reading aloud from the book The Tequila Worm by Viola Canales. Um, I teach sixth grade, and so this is a book that I started teaching when I taught in Texas. Um, the protagonist is a Mexican-American girl living in the Rio Grande Valley, um, and it was really relatable for my students. We talked a lot about um, identity in this book and, and balancing who influences your identity. Um, we also talked a lot about code switching, which is something that a lot of my students had to deal with. Um, and I think that this book is a really good example of how identity develops, which is really important in the middle grades. Um, the protagonist is a girl who wins a scholarship to a boarding school in Austin, and she has to sort of balance who she is at home versus who she is at school. And that's sort of our big idea, is how do you stay true to yourself when your identity is developing? So when I would read this with my kids, what I would do um, is focus on them analyzing how the theme develops throughout the story and the theme of becoming your own person and who, what your identity is. So what I would do in this case um, is I would have them read likely in partners together, um, and then I would have them do what I call a three-level response for quotes that I had selected. So a three-level response is basically they have to tell me what the quote means, uh, why it's important to the story, and then how it develops the theme. Um, and then once they had done that for the beginning of the chapter, I would bring them back together and we would read the end of the chapter together, and they would be expected to independently do a three-level response on a quote that I had selected and then select their own quote that helps develop the theme and do a three-level response. Um, so I will go ahead and start. All right, guys. So in Partners, you guys have gone ahead and read the first part of this chapter. You have responded to the quotes. We've shared those out. Uh, we're going to read the end of this chapter together, and we're going to think about how Sophia's identity continues to develop. Um, I want you to make sure that you're paying really close attention to when you see her identity develop because at the end, when we're done reading, you're gonna pick an important quote to do your three-level response. So I'm gonna read aloud. You're gonna be thinking to yourself, how do we see Sophia's identity develop? And then when we're done, you're gonna write your response. After all the students and their families gathered in the courtyard in front of the cha chapel for a welcome tea with the headmaster, it was time for Berta and my family to head home. Those sandwiches were so tiny, Mama said as we walked towards Berta's car, like for a doll. And where was the coffee, the hot chocolate, I Miha? I'm so worried for you. Your dorm room looks like a prison, and the food, it's like stepping into another moon, though. And here, I thought that it was the canicula that made things crazy. Listen, when you get back to your room, break open the other box and have yourself an empanada or two. And be sure to share them with Brooke. She's too skinny and too pale. The three comadres and Papa started laughing. He put his arm around Mama and gave her a kiss on her rouged cheek, which matched her pretty red dress. Take a big bite, Sophia, Berta said, unwrapping a Hershey's chocolate bar. Only if you put your fingers at the tip, I said, and bit down. Mama and Papa walked on ahead of us, arm in arm. And Sophia, Berta said, Here's my advice to you. One, comb that crazy hair of yours. Two, always, always button your buttons straight. And three, kick that girl Terry out of your mind. Oh, and also remember our promise to Tia Petra about getting good at becoming faraway comadres. With me too, said Lucy. Yes, Lucy, of course, you too, I said, touching her head. And remember to write me about your quinceanera. Quinceanera? Who's quinceanera? Said Mama, turning around. Mine, Mama. I'm starting to plan it, said Lucy, beaming. Papa laughed. Mama shook her head. Hi, Miha. Now that's a record. You need to tell Clara so. Mama stopped. Sophia, what story do you want Clara to tell as she goes around with her story bag? And don't say none. Even with her stroke, Clara was still telling her stories, though now the stories were written on paper and attached to the things in her bag. And we all took turns reading them for her. That my dream came true, Mama. Thanks to you all. Okay, now come here, she said, and she pulled a pair of scissors from her big purse. And stand still. Before I knew it, Mama had cut off a three-inch lock of my hair. Mama, what are you doing? Now give me one of your socks. What? Students and parents were passing by. Hurry! 
Berta and Lucy pulled off my sneaker, then my sock, tossing it to Mama. Good, I'm going to make a Sophia doll from this sock. I'll attach your hair to it and give it to Clara from when she tells her story. They all laughed. I kissed everyone goodbye. When I heard Papa's door slam, I felt very much alone. I stood there waving until the car disappeared. Then, with my heart pounding, I slowly went up the stairs to my room. Was this the right time to open Papa's cascaron? I stopped and reached my, into my shirt pocket and pulled out the little wooden carving of St. Sophia. I suddenly remembered Papa's words of many years before, that our side of town had its own wealth and warmth. I finally understood what he meant. I started climbing the stairs again with St. Sophia back in my shirt pocket, wondering if this strange world would somehow help me understand better not only the other side, but my side as well. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. You have the first quote on your packet. You're going to go ahead and write your three level response, tell me why it's important to Sophia's identity developing. And then you need to go back to what we've just read, find another quote, and do the same thing. Does anyone have questions? Okay. Um, so that is basically how I'd frame the read aloud. Um, while they were working, I would go around to see what they were writing and what quotes specifically they were pulling on their own to make sure they were staying true to that theme developing. There are two or three different um, examples that would be acceptable to me. Um, and if they weren't getting it, then I would give them feedback uh, individually so that they could pick their own, the right quote and make sure that they were successful in analyzing it. So that's it. Um, and I hope that you like this. It's a great book. I highly recommend it, especially for, for middle grades. Um, and she is a very um, good author to sort of increase the different perspectives, um, cultural perspectives in your classroom.